Morning, everybody. Um, Sidney mentioned earlier and about the um, Be Healed book. That's, here it is. It's a, it's a prop. It's, it's in the back for sale. Um, in your folder, there's a few things I wanted to point out to you. Um, one of them is, when you open up your folder on the left-hand side, there's a St. Padre Pio healing and keeping prayer. Cindy also has this listed in your folder as a prayer. But each time we pray for someone, this is what they get. And we pray the prayer with each person that comes for healing prayer. And they go home with it. And they continue to pray to Padre Pio. And there's been a lot. There's been a lot of good news that we've received as um, uh, Padre Pio is just working over time. In addition to that, on the right-hand side of the folder, um, there's a little bookmark. This is who we are. This is what we do. As far as the healing and on the back, um, it identifies some of the blockages for healing and how to get around that. So I thought I'd point that out as well. Also, in your folder, I'll get to this later, but in your folder on the right-hand side, behind the agenda, there's a piece of paper, and it says, Be Healed, A Conversation with God. And we're going to reference that later this at the end of my talk. So I just wanted to point out where this is. So I mention it. You guys will know where it's at. We good? Okay. Okay. One moment. Holy Spirit. <laughs> so what is healing? We're going to talk about that this morning. So I want everybody just take a deep breath and quiet yourself. Place yourself in the presence of God. And let's pray. And as we pray, through experience, I've learned that if your heart is open, God can change your life. If it isn't, it won't make any difference. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to be present in our hearts. And so repeat after me. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We'll wait for his presence. And Father God, in this new year, I pray your presence watch, wash over us anew, that your spirit be present upon us this day, that our hearts will be open to you. Bless us and all those we love, and in a special way, bless those that we don't love as we should. Bless my words and those who receive them, that your Holy Spirit might manifest in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, Cindy asked me to speak about healing, and so my question is, what is healing? Healing is simply restoring your relationship with God and those around us. It's a process of being made whole. Your body, your mind, your soul, and your spirit. The word healing is used throughout scriptures to save, to cure, to make whole, to repair a breach, to restore relationships. In chapter 9 of Matthew's Gospel, he describes one day in the life of Jesus, healing all who came to him. It was his greatest day of healing. He healed the sick. He cast out demons, proclaiming the gospel of his kingdom. And in verse, verses 1 through 8, 
and Jesus healed the paralytic man. He entered a boat, he made the crossing, and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic laying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, courage, child, your sins are forgiven. And at that time, some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking. And he said, why do you harbor evil thoughts? What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. And he rose and he went home. And when the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. So what was going on in the scene? Friends brought a man for physical healing and Jesus saw their faith. When he came to Jesus in faith, to bring others to Jesus in faith, our faith pulls on the promises of God to bring faith into our life. Faith brings heaven to earth. Jesus is always looking for faith. And before Jesus physically heals the paralytic, he forgives his sins. Forgiveness took place before physical healing. Sin is the most important condition that Jesus wants to heal. If there is a separation between you and God, nothing else matters. God wants you to be spiritually healed. And Jesus is pointing out that spiritual healing is more important than physical healing. When we pray for healing, it's to restore our broken relationship with the Father. Maybe Jesus knew he needed to forgive this man of his sin, that sin had separated him from God before he could actually heal him physically so that the healing grace could actually flow. But there are blocks to healing, unforgiveness, lack of repentance, we maintain control of our life. Jesus holds nothing back from us, but we allow sin, unforgiveness, and control to get in the way. This is why when we pray for healing and nothing is happening, we ask the Holy Spirit to show us if there is sin that needs to be forgiven so that we can repeat and repent of the, actually, so we could repent of the sin to allow the physical healing to take place. In Matthew 9, 18, while he was saying these things to them, an official came forward, knelt down before them and said, my daughter just died, but come, lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him and so did his disciples. The father had faith. If you lay your hand on her, she will live. We know Jesus did not have to lay his hand on the daughter to live. And he doesn't say to the father, I don't have to lay my hand on you. Seeing the father's faith, he partners with the father's faith. And in healing, we need to identify where the faith resides and we partner with it. It's faith and partnering with Jesus when healing takes place. This is repeated throughout the Gospels. On Good Friday last year, a person who had left the faith was diagnosed with uh, stage four liver cancer and he came to us asking for prayer. 
Three months later, the doctor said the liver was functioning normally. The person received a physical healing, but what was more important, a spiritual healing because the person returned to church. Sometimes God heals our physical condition to get our attention, and then spiritual healing flows. Sometimes it's the opposite. It's God who does what he wants when he wants. John 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool. In Hebrew, it's called Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay a large number of invalids, ill, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him and knew that he had been laying there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? And the sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm on my way, someone else steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, rise, take up your mat and walk. And at once, the man was healed, and he took up his mat and he walked. After this, Jesus found him in the temple, and he said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one that made him well. The man at the pool waited 38 years for someone to help him into the healing waters. He was there with crowds of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed. He himself was paralyzed and isolated. He had been waiting for 38 years, almost a lifetime, waiting while thousands passed him by until Jesus heard the cry of his heart and approached the man with compassion. And after all those years of waiting, I wonder if this paralyzed man had given up hope, hope that he would ever be healed. It may seem to us that Jesus was only interested in healing the man physically, but this is Jesus. He knows something deep about this paralysis of the man's soul that's not obvious to us. Has the man given up hope? He had a natural God-given desire to be made whole and to have all of his relationships restored. He may have been paralyzed with hopelessness, but he was aware of these deep longings. Jesus is not just asking this man if he wants to be healed. His question is directed to me and you. Can you relate to this man? Can you feel the pain, the anguish, the discouragement? How long have you waited to be healed? Some of us wait our entire life to be healed, to be made whole like the man at the pool after all of our years of struggling with physical, psychological, spiritual conditions and not receiving healing, have we bought into the lie that our broken condition, it's what it is, it'll never get better? Have we given into hopelessness that we can never be healed? Have we given into accepting our pain and just go on with our life? Through our baptism, each one of us became a beloved child of God. Fear and insecurity are false identities. St. Teresa of Calcutta wrote, the devil may try to use the hurts of life and sometimes our own mistakes to make you feel that's impossible that Jesus really loves you. Is there an area in your life physically, psychologically, or spiritually, 
where you have been suffering for a long time, felt helpless, hopeless, when you've called out to God and have not received healing. Be real and be honest. Because in Psalm 22, Jesus from the cross cried out this same prayer to his father. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why so far from my call for help, from my cries of anguish? My God, I call by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I have no relief. Like the man at the pool who said, there is no one to help me. This prayer conveys our helplessness and our hopelessness when we don't receive a response from God. If you don't fully trust Jesus, be honest with yourself and be honest with Jesus because he knows. He knows exactly what we're feeling. Jesus is a compassionate healer. He invites each of us to bring our brokenness to him for healing. We've just moved through the season of Advent, the season of waiting for Emmanuel and his birth at Christmas, the season of hope. Are you feeling hopeful or hopeless? Do you recognize your need for healing? Do you want to be healed? Do you believe that Jesus wants to heal you? What causes you to doubt and not believe that you can receive Jesus' healing love? Jesus will not heal us without our consent and our cooperation. We pursue our desire to be whole and complete, not broken or fragmented, because Jesus built the desire for healing into each and every one of us. St. John Paul II said, in the beginning of creation, everything existed in communion and in harmony, in submission to the Father. The primary root of our suffering is separation from God. There is no sickness, suffering, disease, death, conflicts, war, hatred, murder, psychological or spiritual ailments, because God's love kept everything together in unity. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus encounters the paralyzed man. One day as Jesus was teaching, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was with them for healing. And some men brought a stretcher, Brett, I'm sorry, some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed and they were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence. But not finding a way to bring him into the crowd, they went up to the roof and they lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle of the, Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to ask themselves, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? But Jesus knew their thoughts and he said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. So he stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God, and struck with awe, they said. We have seen incredible things today. In this scene, 
Jesus knows what's going on in the hearts of each person, and he calls them out. He calls them on it. In verse 22, Jesus said, what are you thinking in your hearts? He sees into the deepest areas of the heart of each person, of the paralyzed man's heart and his friends, and the motives in the Pharisees' hearts while watching the miracle, and us. He sees the underlying root of each one of our conditions, and he offers salvation for the whole person not just to save souls, he cares about the whole person, the soul and the body. He came to redeem, to restore all that is broken and separated in and around us, making everything whole as God intended from creation. God's healing involves five primary areas that had been broken by original sin. The first one is our relationship with God. That's spiritual healing. Another one is our relationship with others. That's a relational healing. Then there's the integration, the blending of the soul and the spirit within us. That's psychological healing. Then there's the integration blending of the soul and the body within us. That's physical healing. And lastly, it's our relationship with nature. It's ecological. I can't think of any illness, any condition, disease, or psychological condition that is not rooted in one of these five relationships that define our lives. Really, they are not separate. They are interconnected, and they are part of the bigger whole. And yet, when it comes to healing, they are viewed separately. It's been my experience. Even when a prayer for physical healing didn't bring the results that we had hoped for, the person who came for prayer was changed on the inside from a deeper healing. Jesus knows the healing that we need, and that's what we get when we ask for healing. Sometimes inner healing needs to take place before we can receive a physical healing. Surrender and trust Jesus. Jesus stands next to us asking, do you want to be well again? Do you want to be healed? Christmas is the season of hope. Have we given up hope? that we can be healed, no matter how badly we are hurt in body, mind, soul, or spirit, Jesus knows how to heal us. That was the example of the paralyzed man at the pool. And then there's the story of the woman caught in adultery. Jesus encounters her while she is being publicly humiliated. Imagine the depth of her shame. We are all sinners, and we're fearful of being exposed, fearful of being unworthy of God's love or anyone else's. This feeling is an inheritance from Adam and Eve. Shame is one of the seven deadly wounds. No doubt she is feeling all of those seven deadly wounds. The first is abandonment. She identified with, I'm alone, no one cares. The second wound is fear, I'm afraid, I'll be hurt if I trust someone. Another wound is powerlessness, I can't change it and I'm too weak. Another one is hopelessness, things never get better and I just want to die. Another one is confusion, what's happening, I don't understand. Another one is rejection. I'm not loved. I'm not despised. I am despised. I'm not desired. I'm not wanted. And then lastly is shame. I'm bad. I'm dirty. I'm worthless. I'm stupid. 
Wounds generate internal messages about ourselves affecting our identity and the way that we see ourselves. These powerful forces block our ability to give and to receive love. We need rescued by encountering the merciful love of Jesus. Love heals. Healing is an integral part of human love. Love is the source of healing and wholeness and completeness. And then in Matthew, Jesus heals two blind men. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him crying aloud, have mercy on us, son of David. And when he entered the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly charged them, see that no one knows this. But they went away and they spread the fame throughout the district. What's the question that Jesus asks the blind man? Do you believe that I am able to do this? They are blind and so are we. They are blind and yet they see his identity and his compassion and they have bold confidence, they have bold faith that Jesus can and will heal them. We are dependent on God and are in need of his mercy to restore our vision. And from the two blind men, we learn the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Healing our afflictions or forgiving sins, Jesus always responds to a prayer in faith. Your faith has made you well. And we saw that in scripture when Jesus healed the 10 lepers, the woman with the issue of blood, and then blind Bartimaeus. We all have areas of spiritual blindness. We are all blinded by pride, by fear, and unbelief. We may be blind to spiritual truths. We may be blindness to our own sin. We may be blind to Jesus's presence. We may be blind to the needs of our family members, to the poor, or any other area that we don't see with the eyes of God. In the Gospel of John um, chapter 20, Jesus appears to his disciples after his resurrection. Jesus came and stood in their midst and he said, peace be with you. Now Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin who was not with them when Jesus came. And eight days later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. I want to direct you to the Be Healed, a conversation with God piece that was in your um, handout. On the first page of the handout, the beginning of it, it says Be Healed, a conversation with God. And then, then there's a break and below it, it says meditation. And I'd like for us to focus on meditation. A big part of our growth is believing what we cannot see. And Jesus is healing presence in the sacraments. Today, you have an opportunity to come face to face with Jesus, with past sin that may be a barrier to getting closer to God. 
the sacrament of confession, mass this morning and adoration soon to follow, may be a breakthrough to encounter the love of Jesus in a new way. What will you choose? Jesus will not heal us without our consent and our cooperation. So let's take a moment and close your eyes. And let's all pray together again. Come, Holy Spirit. And let's wait for him to show. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you a physical, a psychological, or a spiritual area of your life where you've been suffering and you have felt helpless or hopeless. Think about all of the times that you tried to be healed of the condition, but you want to do it by yourself. Allow yourself to feel hopeless and helpless. What do you believe about God? What do you believe about yourself? What is your identity? Who are you? And whose are you? You are a beloved child of God, a living, breathing tabernacle filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you want Jesus to do for you? What do you want to see? And call out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. What area of your life are you asking him to heal? Is it pride, fear, unbelief, or judgment that keeps you from seeing Jesus and others with God's vision. When Jesus asks, do you believe that I can do this for you? How do you respond? How do you respond when he asks, do you want to be healed? Be honest to yourself and to Jesus. Look closely and pay attention. Do you see Jesus walking toward you? If you struggle to see him, ask him, Jesus, where are you? He's coming to you. He's coming to heal you. Pay attention to what you might be feeling or thinking. You may feel some tingling you may feel some heat, coolness, or the shalom peace of God. These are manifestations of God and no need to be concerned. Feel the power coming through his hands in his voice of authority. How does Jesus respond to you? Does he ask anything of you? And how do you respond? Imagine if Jesus heals you instantly. How do you feel? Imagine life with his healing. How is your life different now, living without the condition? Tell somebody about your healing that you've received from Jesus. Give him the glory. And how do they react when you tell them of your healing? And then how do you respond to their reaction? And at the very end, is there an area of sin that Jesus warns you about? If it is difficult getting past hopelessness and helplessness, then pray. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that things will never change and that I will never be healed. Beck, let's play that to pray that together. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that things will never change and that I will never be healed. I renounce the lie that I am a vic helpless victim alone with no one to help me. I declare the truth that the power of Jesus is made perfect in my weakness. And I declare the truth that Jesus is my healer 
and Savior. It's not uncommon after we have hopelessness that we also find self-reliance, meaning I can do this all on my own. The church reminds us that humility and trust leads us to trust more and to acknowledge our need for Jesus. Jesus offers hope to the hopeless. He is the divine physician. He came to heal us and he commanded us to heal the sick. Healing is one of the ways that we believe God is near. In our catechism, it states, Christ's compassion toward the sick and his many healings of every kind of infirmity are a resplendent sign that God has visited his people and that the kingdom of God is close at hand. And our catechism further says, often Jesus asks the sick to believe. St. John Paul II reminds us, we are not the sum of our weaknesses and our failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us and our real capacity to become the image of the Son. God alone knows our hearts. The heart alone is our hidden center and beyond the grasp of our season, of our reason and of others. And only the Spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. May you answer Jesus' call today when he asks, do you want to be healed? And you say yes, and you feel his presence. When you receive your healing, physical, spiritual, emotional, praise God and thank him and share his glory and his healing that he's bestowed upon you with others. That's giving him the glory. Thank you. Thank you, be happy to. St. Pio of Petrocina, Healing and Keeping Prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your Son our Lord Jesus Christ to the world to save and to set me free. I trust in your power and grace that sustain and restore me. Loving Father, touch me now with your healing hands, for I believe that your will is for me to be well in mind, body, soul, and spirit. Cover me with the most precious blood of your Son our Lord Jesus Christ, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Cast out anything that should not be in me. Root out any unhealthy and abnormal cells. Open any blocked arteries or veins and rebuild and re any damaged areas. Remove all inflammation and cleanse any infection by the power of Jesus' precious blood. Let the fire of your healing love pass through my entire body to heal and to make new any diseased areas so that my body will function the way you created it to function. Touch also my mind and my emotions, even the deepest recesses of my heart. Saturate my entire being with your presence, love, joy, and peace, and draw me ever closer to you every moment of my life. And Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to do your works so that my life will bring glory and honor to your holy name. I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.